My name is Elisa and this week I will be sewing a beautiful Reformation inspired sheared dress with you. I'm actually already wearing it and I feel like this is something that you guys have been asking for. You wanted a more detailed tutorial on the shearing process and the pattern cutting process. So I recorded everything in detail and put it into this video so you guys can recreate it at home. It is super simple. It basically just consists of a few squares. So you got this. Let's do it. Firstly, I quickly wanted to explain to you what the pattern of this dress looks like on paper. It mostly consists of squares, which is why it's super beginner friendly. So my fabric had a width of about 60 cm on the fold, which means each piece spread out would be about 120 cm wide. I kept it on the fold and measured about 35 cm down from one end of the fabric for my first rectangle. This should be the height of your torso from where you want the neckline to hit to your waist, plus about 5 cm seam allowance. So this measurement will vary from person to person. This rectangle will become your shirt bodice. From that point, I measured down about 28 cm for each of my next two rectangles, which will become the sleeves. These sleeves are extremely oversized, as I said, 120 cm in width when spread out. If you want them to be smaller and less puffy, you can simply cut them in half and have them 60 cm or whatever the width of your folded fabric is wide. To give myself some more space, I cut out a quarter of a circle in each sleeve, which will become the lower part of the armhole. The following two rectangles were 8 cm wide each. They would later become the ruffles on the skirt. This is the point where you will want to cut your first pieces, because you will have to change the folding of the leftover fabric for your skirt. I took the remainder of my fabric, folded it open and created a new fold line perpendicular to the previous one, effectively creating one bigger square for my half circle skirt. The dotted line indicates the old folding line. I then measured out the circle skirt in a way that would give me a waist opening of 65 cm, which would be 130 cm when opened entirely, and a skirt length of 55 cm. Depending on how tall you are and how long you want the skirt to be, this measurement may vary. As one side of the skirt is cut on the fold, you will end up with only one seam. You could place that in the center back, on the side, or if you wanted to go for a slit, in the front. All of these pieces cut out ended up looking something like this. All of the pieces assembled would eventually look something like this, or at least that's the goal. So here are my actual cutout pattern pieces minus the back bodice panel as I cut that out a bit later in the sewing process. From left to right we have two long rectangles for the ruffles of the skirt. Then the half circle skirt. In the top right we have one big rectangle for the shirt top and in the bottom right the sleeves. To start off all you need are a pair of scissors, chalk, some pins, two spools of elastic thread, and one spool of generic thread that fits the color of your fabric. You'll also need some elastic for the sleeves, which I forgot to show in this shot. I started by overlocking all of my pattern pieces so I wouldn't have to use two machines at the same time too often. If you don't have an overlocker or serger available to you, you could choose a blanket stitch on your sewing machine and finish off your raw edges this way. Once all of that is done, you can start with your bodice. I folded over about 2.5 cm on the top end of my bodice square and pressed it down. I sewed it in place with a stitch length of about 3. Now to hand winding the bobbin with the elastic. This is a bit trickier than it looks, but not at all hard. You'll have to apply the slightest amount of tension to the thread 
to evenly get it on your spool, but also not too much so your machine can fit it to your garment evenly. You'll then simply pop it in your machine as you normally would. It's best to first give it a few test runs to see if you get the desired shirring effect. The longer the stitch length you choose, the more shirred your fabric will be. I chose a stitch length of about 4.5 first, but reiterated that to 3.5. The shirring process took me a good two hours. What you want to do is start on one end of the fabric and sew one long line in serpentines down your square. To ensure you get an even spacing between your lines, count the stitches at your turning points. For me, that was four stitches each before turning everything 90 degrees. Once you run out of bobbin thread, you tie together the top and bottom of your shirring seam to ensure everything is in place. You then hand wind your bobbin again and start another line. Repeat the process until your entire piece is finished. Once my bodice piece was shirred, I realized that it contracted quite a bit more than I expected. And if I would have wrapped it all around my torso, I would have lost a lot of the shirred look. I think the excess amount of width you need depends from fabric to fabric and also, as I mentioned earlier, on the stitch length you choose. So I would highly recommend trying and testing. A rough guide, however, could be that you need double the amount of width for each back and front, so if you end up with more, you can still trim it. To create a back piece panel to bridge the gap, I searched the scraps of fabric I had left. I ended up with something that looked a little bit like this. I placed the front and back bodice pieces right sides together and sewed down the slightly back set side seams. And voila, the bodice was done. Next up, I joined together my two long rectangles for the skirt ruffles and gave the top edge two basting stitches. A basting stitch is simply a seam sewn with the longest stitch length on your machine without closing the beginning and the end. I folded the bottom edge over by half a centimeter and top stitched that down. This will later be the hem of the dress. As it was already later in the evening, I sat down in front of the TV and gathered the ruffles while watching some Pursuit of Love. I pinned the ruffles to the skirt and cut off a bit of excess that the length of the ruffles didn't quite cover. I sewed down the ruffles and closed the skirt seam with my overlocker. It was then time to join the top and bottom of the dress in holy matrimony. For that I identified two sides as well as front and centre back of both the skirt opening and the bodice. I pinned the two pieces together in these spots and placed a few more sporadic needles in between. On my machine I made sure to pull the two pieces so the elasticated top would meet the non-elastic skirt in the right way while sewing them together. This way, when not stretched, the shirt top would gather the skirt nicely around the waist while still leaving enough space to jump in and out of the dress without any zips or buttons. Now the last thing to do was to finish the sleeves and add them to the dress. For that, I took my already overlocked pattern pieces and folded the shoulder seam over by 2 cm. 
That would create a tunnel for my elastic to go through, which I've cut to the approximate length that I needed. I pierced the safety pin through the elastic and used it to thread it through the tunnel. I secured both ends of the elastic with a few stitches and evenly distributed the fabric for a gathered look. Because I felt one layer of my thinner elastic wasn't quite enough for the cuff of the sleeve, I joined two pieces of the same length together on my machine. Simply pull the elastic while it goes through. That way it will keep its elasticity while being reinforced by the second piece. Push and pull. Push and pull. I then created another smaller tunnel of 1.5-ish centimeters at the cuff, threaded the strengthened elastic through, secured it in place and closed the side seam of the sleeve. All of these steps are repeated in the exact same way for the other sleeve. To pin the sleeves to the top, I aligned the side seam of the sleeve with the side seam of the top. I then pinned the remaining fabric along the neckline and basted it down. I needed to shorten the length of the sleeves a bit, which was no problem. I simply opened the securing stitches to be able to pull out the elastic and cut the excess off the unstretched band. And with that, the dress was finished. I really like this dress. It's so simple to make and I feel ready for anything while I wear it. It would work for a day at the beach with some sandals and a hat, a shopping day with some trainers and a summer night out with some heels. It would work for many occasions. These must easily be the puffiest puff sleeves I've ever made and they make the dress special but not over the top. Let me know what you think in the comments.